How's it going guys? It's Lorenzo coming at you with another video. In today's video, I wanted to talk about two different dApps or digital audio players. One that was released in 2006, another that was released in 2019. We're going to see what the differences and similarities are between both of these. One that is a modded retro dApp and another that is a classic modern dApp. So that's a really cool kind of juxtaposition that I like and hopefully this video proves to be informative and entertaining. So let's get started guys. This video isn't tailored to audio files. This is just an enthusiast kind of video for people who like modding or people who like comparing two different devices or two different kinds of dApps that I find interesting. There are some similarities and I'll go over the similarities first. So they're around the same size. They both obviously have a headphone jack. They're on the same weight. Both should charge. This is very important guys. So both should charge via a five watt charger, charging brick, okay? So this right here is a Motorola 5-watt five, five charger. Um, I'd really recommend that you get a 5-watt charger so that you don't mess up the batteries of both of these. Um, this is the, you know, you don't want to use a super fast charger like this one from Sam, Samsung because it'll just mess up the batteries. It'll just, uh, it, these batteries and these, the motherboards aren't designed for super fast charging or fast charging in general. So just keep that in mind, guys. Use a 5-watt charger for both of these devices. So this supports a standard SD card type. This one supports a micro SD card type. So now I think it's very important to realize which devices support which kinds of audio formats or even video formats, right? So this supports audio and video. And I'll put a screenshot of what it supports right on the screen right now. And you can take a screenshot of it. The iPod Video 5th Gen supports just four different audio codecs, okay? It supports... WAVE, MP3, ACC, and AIFF. So in the marketing of this product, the Surfans MP3 player, it says that it supports all major lossless audio codecs. Right off the bat, in the hands, this one is a lot more uncomfortable than this one, okay? Just keep that in mind. And as you can see, that it has pointed edges, and it's also made out of this zinc alloy, which is a metal. So it is it is more rugged and more durable, I think, than this one, since this one's a harder plastic, hard plastic, and a you know, a um, kind of an aluminum alloy, I think, back tray. I'm not totally sure what it is made out of, but I think it's a metal, but it's a lighter metal than this one. This one just feels more rugged and more solid and like you can bang it around and it won't really break. But this one, like it feels like it might break. What I like about the the design of the Surfads MP3 player is that it is more functional in design in terms of the u user interface of the button layout. I like the minimal design of the of the of the iPod, but I think it's too much. Like it goes over too too much. This has dedicated volume up and volume volume down buttons, as you can see right there. And then it has a dedicated power button, which this is this doesn't even have. The iPod does not have a dedicated power button, and unfortunately, it does have a hold button. And I'll I'll demo what that what that does. So I'll turn it on. What it does is that it allows you to not hit buttons by accident. So say you're doing some yard work or you're working out, you're running or you're jostling around and this is in like your pocket or, um, you know, you're working out in the gym or something like that. And you don't want to, you know, accidentally press this, one of these buttons and skip one of your songs or, uh, pause one of your songs, then you can just press the whole button and it won't do that. So that's a really cool feature. Um, but you know, I would have preferred a power button over a hold button any day of the week. Or any of the any day of the year actually the display has slept it didn't turn off just so you know um you can still see like the letters and stuff like that the backlit panel is is off right now what i do like about the design of the ipod is that it has this kind of and this is um it has this design of we go back here it has this design of like uh of a touch interface already back in 2006 is pretty cool and I believe it's patented. That's why this one doesn't have one of those. So that's probably why. Pretty cool feature. You just, you know, scroll clockwise, counterclockwise. When you're playing something, right? So when you're playing a song, it's already playing something. When we when we slide this, say like this, you can see that the volume slider pops up. So you don't actually need, you know, dedicated buttons. And I guess that was kind of an innovative move from Apple back in the day. They were trying to see how to you know, make it as minimalistic as possible without, you know, excess buttons and stuff like that. And I don't know, it, and, you know, it's kind of gimmicky, but, you know, they they incorporated volume buttons later on in their iPhones and in their iPod touches and stuff like that. So, and even in their, I believe in their iPod Nanos. So, yeah, 
And then when we flip it down, uh, we can see that this one has a 30 pin connector. So that's how you charge the device and also how you transfer data into it. So songs and stuff like that from iTunes back in the day or from where you pirate your songs like I do. You just, uh, yeah, so media human, that's what I use. But um, but yeah, so that's that's uh, well, that's one way, you know, that's, that's the iPod way. And then we have a dedicated micro USB connection right here. Um, it also has these, let me flip it over real quick so we can see it and better. So it has this headphone jack and it has also an un another kind of headphone jack, you know, audio jacks. So what I noticed is that when I plug this, this audio jack in to say an aux connection on my, in my car, when it's at 50% volume, it's as loud as this one when it's at max volume at hundred percent. So I found that pretty interesting. And maybe somebody in the comments can actually point out what this one, what that little symbol means uh, on, on the top. Like this one has headphones. This one has a different kind of symbol on the top. So this is, it has a USB symbol. So if anybody knows what this symbol means, just let, let us know in the comments down below. Thanks. I mean, the iPod in of itself, you know, when you put it to the max volume, it actually, you know, uh, it actually has a pretty loud sound. So you don't really need that kind of connector anyways. Um, so yeah. And uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it about the physical attributes, guys. Um, another thing is pretty important is about, you know, the, the, the protection of these devices. You don't want to mess them up. So, you know, you can get something like this on eBay. Unfortunately, this is a too small of a case for my iPod because I got the thin, I got the thick uh, back tray for this one when I modded it instead of the thin. So it, this one doesn't fit the thick back tray. It fits the thin back tray. So I just have it here and lying around. I might get another, either a back tray and a thin back tray. It was only like five bucks. So I, I just decided not to like send it back. Um, but I guess like, yeah, so it's a hard plastic kind of case. It's not going to be bulletproof, like say in modern day phone cases and stuff like that. So just keep that in mind, guys. Um, and then this one, you know, that's the only kind of physical, you know, case that you can get for the iPod. It doesn't have any screen protectors or stuff like that. But this one actually does have screen protectors that you can get on the Amazon. And also it comes, doesn't come with it, but it has like this, uh, this case, this pouch, you know, it's a different company, but the manufacturers of this meant it for this, but you can actually use it for the iPod too. So, I mean, I don't really take this around. It's too bulky. We're not in the nineties anymore. For travel, it's fine, but for, you know, everyday kind of carrying it around, I just carry these in my pocket. This is my everyday DAP that I use, but this is just a backup now. I got this one before I got this one. Now let's go over the modding of the iPod, guys. So I'm not going to take this iPod apart. I just don't really want to do that right now. What I'll do is I, I will leave a link down below in the video description that will, that will show you how to mod these in great detail. So it's from... It's a video by the YouTuber called This Does Not Compute. And uh, he has a lot of different kinds of great tips in that video that you should follow if you want to mod these. So now let's go over the price of both of these guys. So I think that it's important to realize that, you know, this is this is a modded version iPod. So you're going to get more, you need to get more parts and stuff like that. And it's going to be more expensive. The iPod video with everything that I needed for the modifications costed around $250 USD including the sales tax where I live in Texas, uh, USA. And then this is um, around $135, including sales tax. So yeah, it's, it's uh, and this is USD, right? So this is not, you know, it's a pretty big difference, you know, about a, you know, a little bit more than a hundred dollar difference. In my opinion, the iPod is more, more pleasant of an experience than this one is because it is just more fluid and you can get to songs quicker, I think. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, you can scroll down and it, and it goes to the different kind of, you can see that the different kinds of letters. So it's alphabetized and stuff like that. So when you do it really quickly, it does that. Um, so yeah, I mean, it has cool kind of software quirks to it. And this one doesn't have that. Like it's very bulky and very kind of like, you have to scroll all the way to the one that you want, the song that you want. It all depends on what you modify on the iPod, you don't have to spend two hundred fifty dollars on the iPod. I don't know. Maybe in the future this will have like a community like this one does today. 
So, well, only time will tell, right? So anyways, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave a like and have a good day. Peace.